Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is actually our first of his kind. And I'm really excited to go a little bit deeper into this niche and the passive income uh, potential of it. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. He is the automation master from landmodo.com, scotttodd.net, and most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, what do you know about uh, school spirit vending? Uh, well, I know that I, I give my money, uh, my kids money for, at school and they love to spend it in the vending machine. So like beyond that, I don't know anything else about like vending machines or anything beyond that. So I'm excited to hear, learn, learn more about it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Cause like when I take my daughter to dance, the first thing she wants to do is go to the freaking vending machine. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, so let's learn more about, uh, vending machines from matt miller if you don't know who matt miller is he spent the first nine years of his career as an air force pilot before entering the corporate world to work at both abbott laboratories and velasis now he was a top performer at both companies but his long-term desire was to start a business and be his own boss and a good friend one day mentions to him that gumball machines that he and his young daughters owned and and talked about that and that conversation we got a 10-year business quest that resulted in the creation and subsequent growth of school spirit vending. Over the years, Matt's diligent effort and entrepreneurial expertise has brought school spirit vending to the cutting edge of both the vending and school fundraising industry by combining these two ventures into one, like a blue ocean strategy. Today, school spirit vending's hassle-free fundraising program is helping schools across the country raise money in its own way. This is like the Tom's Shoes of vending machines like you feel good about it and you make money matt miller how are you i'm doing awesome mark and scott thanks for having me on man this is cool i, I didn't get the memo though that i was supposed to have a white background you, you guys didn't you guys didn't fill me in in advance i apologize it's our for, fault but uh, you know we just like to look at you we're not this isn't even gonna be a video it's just i mean you like we, we're also wearing black shirts what happened i've always <laughs> i've always kind of looked at the direction of the crowd and gone the other way. So I, I guess this is no different. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, you, tell us the conversation that you had with your wife when you said, hey, honey, I'm going to quit my job or, or I'm going to invest in vending machines. Well, I, I mean, we were in such a bad place financially at the time, guys, that there was no talk of me quitting my job. Um, and because we were hurting so bad, she was game for anything. Um, you know, of course, Air Force pilot, ad executive, vending operator. I mean, isn't that the natural progression for most folks? So I don't see how she would give me grief. Um, but no, we were, yeah, we were exactly. Hurting. It seems like a perfect fit, Matt. <laughs> we, we were hurting, man. And, and I had read Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and bought into his whole idea of passive income and making money while you sleep. So um, I, I was trying to figure that out. And when my buddy, buddy mentioned gumball machines, since I couldn't even afford my own house, let alone uh, rental properties or anything like that, like Kiyosaki talks about. So vending one gumball at a time to start with was my way of slowly working my way out of the rat race. Um, and it was, it was a long road, but it finally happened and you know, pretty pumped about it today. Yeah. I mean, I always see like, you know, if I'm reading like business week and I'm looking at the classifieds, it's always like, like that little like blurb in the back, you know, own vending machines, you know, vending machine territory or something like that. And I'm always just kind of, you know, I roll my eyes and I just glaze over it. So let's, let's, let's take my skeptical hat off, Matt, and walk me through the business model of vending machine investing. And when I say me, I really mean the Royal we, me. Scott and I vending or, or what we're doing with our franchise or a little bit of both. Both. Okay. So, so basic vending, it's real simple. You know, you, you buy a vending machine, you find a location that will allow you to put it there. And that machine produces income day 
in and in day out without you having to be there. It enabled me to be a busy professional in the advertising space, uh, a father of three, husband, active in my church, et cetera, and slowly but surely put together an income on the side that allowed me to scale at whatever pace I wanted to where eventually the pace got uh, and the size got big enough to where I was able to walk away fr from my full-time career. Now, along the way, 07 and 08 hit and the market tanked and there weren't as many people frequenting my regular vending locations, which were restaurants and nail salons and that type of thing in and around the Houston area where we lived at the time. And that's where the whole idea of school fundraising came about because I had a number of kids knocking on my door selling me stuff for the local school. I didn't know the kids, so they were going knocking you know, on strangers' doors to raise money and having kids of comparable age, it kind of made me uncomfortable. So I was like, man, is there a way I can, I can do business in the schools where the kids are five days a week, nine months out of the year, and potentially get some kids off the street? So the whole idea of custom stickers, sticker machines in the school was born then. In fact, October 10 years ago was when we placed our very first machine and have now been doing what we do with School Spirit Vending for a decade. All right, I, I, I love it. So, Scott Todd, you want, you want to put on your Andrew Warner hat? Well, so, so this isn't your typical, you know, like, uh, vin vending machine. Like, you know, I'm thinking of, like, you know, sodas and snacks. This is not what your business is about, right? It looks like you're more geared towards, uh, like, school mascot stickers and, you know, educational games that people can buy from the vending machine. And it looks like that money goes to the school. But now is this stuff that is like, are these vending machines only placed at schools or are they placed at like businesses? Uh, the they could, they could be the placed. School? They could be placed anywhere up to this point in time. Most of our focus is in the schools themselves, but yeah, I mean, the, any, any restaurant, any grocery store you go by, et cetera, you're going to see, machines similar to ours. Um, what makes what we do unique is that we have custom machines for the location. We put custom product in those machines in the form of spirit stickers. Uh, we're doing something that, that nobody else in the vending industry is doing, it is we're making it that school's product and that school's machine and in, instead of just throwing a machine in a location. Okay. So, so then like to, to be a little skeptical and to, to kind of look at this from a different set of eyes, like why, why would I do this through a franchise and not necessarily like go and get the machines on my own, source them and, you know, then kind of just duplicate it. What, what's, what's the value of the franchise here? Well, number one, there are very few suppliers out there anymore that provide sticker machines. Number two, uh, the economies of scale allow us to um, source product for our machines, the custom and otherwise, at a much cheaper price than somebody can go out and do on their own. Okay. Any program to where schools have the ability, or to where our, our franchisees, before they even see the product that's available for them to put in their machines, Majority of them, we have already tested and proven that the kids will buy it. Um, okay. Of course, there's a whole community. We've got 105 franchisees that, uh, you know, we support and work with. And so people have the opportunity of the benefit of learning from the combined experience of those 100 plus franchisees and a decade worth of business that we've done. You know, we're in 2,500 schools. We've raised approaching $5 million for education in the last decade. Um, we can help people go from point A to point B much more quickly instead of them trying to figure it all out. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can always make more money, but you can't get more time. So if you can shorten the learning curve and, and uh, you know, avoid the, the headaches and, and the mistakes, it's, it's, it, I can see why that's a great value proposition. So, Matt, can we, can we dig a little deeper into the numbers? Sure. So 
if if you want to buy a vending machine, do you buy one vending machines? Do you buy a portfolio of vending machines? How do you recommend getting started? And then what is the typical day to day, uh, you know, effort of of running it look like? And and then what is your uh, your typical ROI? So we don't have anything to do with the machines themselves. And that was actually an intentional decision by me at the very beginning, because you mentioned those little classified ads that you've seen and everybody has seen in on Craigslist or in their local Trader Joe's paper or the newspaper or whatever. Most of those companies are what you call biz, business op, biz ops, and they make their money by selling exorbitantly priced equipment um, on the front end and then making promises to folks about what performance can look like that in most cases are not true. In, with our business, I have nothing to do with the machines. I don't make a penny from the machines. I put you in contact with the supplier that we've been working with for going on 13 years now. And, and you work directly with them. Um, you purchase the, the equipment at, at, the, at the normal market price for equipment that's uh, uh, similar. Um, we make all of our money on the sale of stickers because that's where our franchisees make their money. And so the better they do, the better we do as a franchise. So it's a win-win all around and it keeps us focused 100% of the time on the profitability of our franchisees and continuing to do what we do better and more profitably for them. Um, so they order whatever equipment they want. Every school has, has typically one machine. Um, as far as uh, you know, margins are concerned, most of our operators see margins between 38 and 42% uh, for every item vended. Um, those margins are actually in many cases better than what somebody could get on their own out in the industry because of the program that we've set up, because of the relationships we have with the schools, and because of the, of the cost of goods that is significantly cheaper because we represent so many locations around the country. So then, so then like that margin that you just gave, is that like minus your franchise fee or is your franchise fee wrapped up into the cost of goods? That, that's minus all of all of the expenses. So, um, so like ballpark, I could sell a, a VIN for like 50 cents and I'm probably going to earn, let's say 20 cents. 20 to 21 and a half cents typically okay. is, is what somebody's going to make from that. Okay. And then, you know, and then like, um, like the machine, like obviously the machine has to like be depreciated or amortized over time. Right. Like, you know, because I'm going to make this capital investment of the machine. So is, is the margin that you gave kind of net of that investment or it, that doesn't cape in, that doesn't take into account any of that at all. Okay. Um, all right. To be honest, I'm not a numbers guy. That's, that's way above my pay grade. That's why I hire accountants to, you know, to, to do what I need to have done on that end. But that's right. just the basic bare, bare bones numbers. Okay. So I, 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 um, I buy, I buy stickers for, um, or the product for like, let's say 30 cents. Does that include the, the money to the school too? Yeah, that, that, those margins okay. include money okay, to so the that's school. The profit. Yeah, that, that's the true profit. Okay, all right, great. That's awesome. That's crazy. Um, those, those are some serious margins. And then as far as loading the machine, managing the machine, um, getting the money out of the machine, who does that? The, the franchisees do that. You know, they own their own equipment. They they buy their own product for the machine, um, and can decide what products to put in, what not to put in, etc. Though we give them access to to anything you can think of as far as product availability, um, and they've got a place where they can go to you know to purchase all that product. Um, but developing relationships in the schools, you know, the actual servicing of the equipment, all that stuff is up to them. Now, here's, here's the beautiful thing about what we do. I, I had 75 schools myself before I walked away from my full-time advertising career. Um, I was working at, at the time about five days a month to, to make an income 
that was in excess by several times what my full-time career income was. So, you know, when you talk passive income, when you talk lifestyle, which in my uh, definition is control over time and money, you know, our program is something that people can do on a time commitment on the side of what they do in their career if they like, and then over time, build this thing up over here that gives them options down the road. We've got some franchisees on our team. All they want to do is have a secondary income and that's it. But we've got others that see this as a way to get free and to be able to do other things in their life that they would really rather be doing if they had the money coming in that didn't demand all of their time. And so we have complete flexibility. Every franchisee has their own, you know, wants, dreams, goals, and desires. We just provide the, the knowledge, the platform, and the community for them to learn from. And then they, you know, kind of make this be whatever they want. I've got one couple as an example. They've been with us for years. They used this to, to take a trip to Europe every year. They used it to pay for their daughter's college education, and they just used it to pay for her wedding last October. Um, and he works full time in the average or in the uh, insurance world. Loves what he does. Has no hands of doing anything else. But this is something that the two of them can do on the side. She she volunteers in the classroom for a private school, and, and it's a perfect fit for them because they days a month that they work in and out of the schools that they're in, and then the rest of the month they do what they want. So, um, so like, what would it cost me to get, get started? Like franchise, et cetera. I mean, what, what type of investment am I looking to make in there? Shiny I'm, object syndrome, Scott Todd. <laughs> you, Matt, I think, well, you got your, I think you got a customer. Like I'm, I'm running the numbers here. I'm trying to understand the whole picture. Cause I am a numbers guy. Right. Like I got to know right. the numbers. So right. yeah. Yeah. By, by the way, we're, we're, we're going to end this podcast and we're going to stop investing in raw land and go, go deep <laughs> into vending. Well, you Shiny can do objects. both if you want. You well, can it do depends both on the numbers, want. right? Because I, yeah. I, I have to figure in. Like, I have another thing, which is I got to hire somebody to go do this. Sure. Yeah, we, we have to automate it. Sure. it, it can we, sure. can right. we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can can yeah. we deliver Cause, product? Because I can't do this from the boat that I want to be on. Uh, right. You know, like, I can't do it. Well, to give you an idea. Somebody to do it. We, we need to do this overseas so idea, we can hire Scott. Upwork VAs. There yeah. you go. I, to give you an idea, I have not serviced my own schools in going on six years. I've got okay. route people that have done that. The quarters keep getting deposited. The checks keep coming in. Um, and I have not set foot in many of my schools for six years. Um, I, I now, I didn't though. do that initially. I didn't do that initially because I, right. I was the one that got out and got the ball, ball rolling, developed the relationships, et cetera. But after a while, I was able to pass that off to somebody else for sure. Um, getting back to your question about the startup cost. First off, to put it in perspective, the average franchise in the US today is about 150 grand. Right. That was 100,000 reasons why I didn't have a typical franchise. Um, our startup cost is right around 12, or excuse me, right around $19,700. Um, ha about half of that, that is equipment product. You know, the franchise fee itself is only 10600 of that. Um, that gets you a, a protected territory of 200 schools. Um, it gets you, of course, all the support, et cetera, needed in perpetuity, essentially. Um, it gets them a, uh, a $2,000 mentorship, which is six months with one of the veterans on our team, uh, part of which they're required to come and spend a few days in your territory, helping you go out and begin to spread the word and, and learn the ropes. That's one of the reasons why we've had the success that we've had is we're not just telling people how to do what we do. We're showing them. And then we've got somebody that is there always, you know, for the first six months to answer questions, to help solve problems and uh, because they've been there, done that, got the t-shirt for years, um, you know, they're a sounding board and, and have been a huge resource for our f new folks. Uh, it's about $3,600 worth of product and, you know, marketing materials and all that kind of stuff as the basis for getting started. And then the equipment for the first five schools is right around $3,500 or so. Um, 
so all that comprises that that nineteen thousand seven hundred um, for folks. Okay. All right. So machines about seven hundred dollars for future schools. Yeah, plus shipping. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad. Okay, so clearly the bank either loves you or hates you bringing all these quarters. <laughs> Depends on the bank. That's that's actually one of the biggest steps when folks get started. Is as part of our initial training, we talk through who my right bank. Because um, some of them, you know, look at you cross-eyed as you walk in with, you know, 50 pound bags of quarters. <laughs> some of them welcome it gladly. Some of them don't. So uh, there does require normally a little bit of shopping around to banks and credit unions in the area once somebody gets started. But once that's figured out, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that we do on a monthly basis. It just happens. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what's the, what's the toughest part about the business? Like, the you know, like, like every business has something that like, you know, just sucks. Like in our, in our business, I think Scott, you'd, you'd, uh, you'd say like the toughest part for people starting is getting the list. Yeah. Yeah. I think like for, for what we do, it's, it's getting your brain around the fact of not just getting the list, but then the fact that somebody's going to give away an asset for pennies on the dollar. That's the hardest thing. It's a mental thing. Yeah. Yeah. How about for you, Matt? I mean, I would say the hardest part is just the first few months. Everybody that has joined our team over the last 10 years, aside from me and one of the other guys that was with me at the very beginning, um, have no background in vending whatsoever. And most of them have no background working with the schools. So it's learning vending and it's working. It's learning to work in and out of the school environment. You know, in most areas, they've never heard of us before. So there's an initial paradigm shift because we're walking into a school and essentially offering them free money and no other fundraising company has ever done that before. So initially they're like, okay, so what's the catch here? But, but once they work through that and folks get a few early adopter schools that are ready to, to raise their hand and say, this makes too much sense. Let's do it. Then things get easier and and easier as time's on to where after a while they end up having schools call them out of the blue saying, Hey, we heard from so-and-so about your program. We want it type thing. Um, I probably get two email, two to three emails a day that are prospective schools from our franchisees around the country that want to be, to be part of what we do that we then forward to the franchisee in their area to get them set up. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd, I, I you know, I, I, I was a little skeptical at first. Now I, I think uh, we're going to have to start a little vending machine LLC. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think it's interesting. I think it, uh, if, you know, here's the thing, Mark, is, um, you know, and, and Rich Dad Poor Dad does a great job of talking about this in his book. The, the reality of any business is that where there's a system in place, right? Like, or if you can build a system, then it's, it's fantastic. What makes real estate so uh, interesting for a lot of people, especially like homes, is that a home is a complex system, right? I mean, it's, it's really not that hard. You got some pipes for the, for the, for the uh, plumbing, you got some electrical coming in, but it's, it's, a, it's a home system. It's a system that runs. And so it just creates money. And I think the fact that you could literally deploy these uh, vending machines to, uh, to schools, I mean, like I'm, obviously this is something that's like, really probably popular with elementary school students, you know, um, the fact that there's this vending machine there that, you know, like they could get school stickers or I, I'm looking at your website, like little games that they could play because, you know, come on, who wants to do and pay attention in school when you can play a game, right? Like that's kind of a cool thing. So I could see the, the revenue stream and the system that's built around it to, uh, to, to generate this, the, the ongoing income, Matt, you know like, just a, a follow-up question though. Like you told me I had 200 protected schools, right? So obviously you're going to look at this area and say, okay, well, we're going to give Scott this particular like county or this geographic area. And I start going to these schools, then like, what is my success rate as I'm going to these things? Because clearly they all can't say yes. Well, a lot of that, to be honest, Scott, depends on time. I mean, I've got some districts that I'm in where I have close to a hundred percent in the schools but that happened over several years right you know 
Um, as more and more familiarity occurs, as, as we do more and more good by the schools, they talk and we're able to leverage, you know, relationships, testimonials, you know, that type of thing to, to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the schools in our area. Um, and every once in a while you come across a school where it doesn't matter what you say, the administrator just is not going to have any part of what we do. Right. Um, and we get that. That's the same in anything. But those administrators also are not there forever. And eventually they're going to leave. And eventually we'll get there. Um, you know, we went in Texas initially in the Houston, San Antonio and Dallas, Fort Worth areas primarily to 10 years ago, no one having any clue who we were to where today a large percentage of the schools in Texas have our program. And it's because we've been here consistently. We've got, I think, 15 franchisees in the state. Every single one of them is out on a regular basis promoting what we do uh, to the schools in their area. You know, we've transitioned to utilizing social media, you know, Facebook and all those kind of things to develop relationships and promote what we're doing on top of the, the old fashioned ways of, of promoting with door to door and trade shows and postcards and that type of thing, emails. But um, we have evolved and it's easier and easier today than it ever was for us to get the word out. And because our value proposition to the schools is literally, we're going to write you a check every month that you don't have to do anything for, and we're not requiring any volunteers to do what we do. That's music to the ears of most of the of most of these schools because money and volunteers are the two resources that they're always short of. I mean, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking like, I mean, you keep talking about the schools and going to the schools, but like, I know like down the street from my house is a pizza place, right? Like it's, it's probably very, I don't go there on Fridays, but I'm sure it's very popular on Fridays with like the, you know, the kids from these particular schools or some of these schools. I mean, I could just take this, this machine and put it into the pizza place because surely they want to support the, the local school. Right. You know, and so there's kids that come into this restaurant. Is there anything prohibiting from doing that? No, no. I mean, that seems like a like a no brainer. Like find find some of these pizza places. It, it's just the the, the, chal- the challenge is that a lot of those businesses they are a a for profit business, and if they right. have vending equipment there, the reason why it's there it's because it's another income stream for them. So yeah. um, many of them don't want to share in that. And and to be honest, just between you and me, I know nobody else is listening. Um, <laughs> Uh, just Mark, <laughs> when, when, when you've got, when you've got a school with 600 kids in it that are there five days a month, week, nine months out of the year compared to a pizza place that might have 30 kids come into it on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, there's a big difference in the numbers. Let me just look at that. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm with you. Okay. All right. All right. Interesting. Well, it, it's time now to put you on the spot, Matt, and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource. Um, you know, a, uh, a, a book, anything actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Your mentorship has been phenomenal. And I, I, I you know, my heart's beating a little faster thinking about this. Um, but we're going to ask you for one more tip. What do you got? Man, uh, well, as far as far as a book right now, one that I'm deep in the middle of is is Russell Brunson's dot uh, com secrets. Oh, okay. Um, if your listeners have not have not read that, that um, and they do anything online at all, I would encourage them to pick that up. Um, of course, they can also pick up the ebook that I wrote. Uh, it's called "Live Your Dreams: The Top Ten Reasons Why You Need to Own a Vending Business." And it encapsulates the last 13 years of my world in vending and uh, gives them a reason why vending might be a good addition to what they're already doing um, and the benefits of it. And they can go to ssvbusiness.com slash best passive income to download that for free. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, check out this uh, Chrome um, this, this Chrome, uh, extension and it's called, uh, meeting bird. 
Okay. Uh, have you heard about Meeting Bird? I have not. Let me check it out. So Meeting Bird. Me, Meeting Bird Chrome extension. So you can go to meetingbird.com forward slash Chrome. Okay. And um, what it does is it pulls in your Google Calendar, which I use, and I know you do. Right. And it pulls it into the into your Gmail account uh, right there. So you can don't even have to leave the screen to look at your, um, you don't have to change apps, nothing. It's all right there within the web version, which I now favor the web version over like uh, a client, an email client, simply because of the fact that I can just shut it down and ignore it. Huh. So, you know, for somebody like me that shouldn't be checking email very much, should yeah. I not? Well, get then you're this? in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'm not going to get it. I, I can see don't, why it'd be okay. great. Don't, don't get it. You don't get it. I'm going to get it. You should and get our it. Listeners, yeah. Our listeners who like they, that they, they can like tolerate email, they should get it too. Yeah, Matt, one, one of the greatest things uh, ever was Scott pushed me to delete mail from my phone. So it forces me to check mail only when I'm in front of my computer. And, uh, and life has been very different ever since. Yeah, I'd love to do that, man. But I've just got, I've got too much pulling at me. So, I, but someday. <laughs> someday, someday. Yeah, speaking, I, of, speaking of Chrome extensions, uh, are you guys familiar with Streak? S-T-R-E-A-K? Yes. yes, love Streak. Man, Google Streak, it's another Chrome extension, uh, streak.com. It's a CRM system that ties right in with your, with your Gmail and it's been a game changer for us, for sure. Allows you to schedule email, allows you to track email, allows you to set up sales, you know, pipelines, that type of thing. And that's that's been a huge, huge for us too. Yeah, it's phenomenal for follow-up with, uh, with your customers. And then my tip of the week is learn more about school spirit vending at ssvbusiness.com forward slash passive income. Is that right, Matt? Uh, well, yeah, best passive income. Oh, best passive income. I'm sorry, best yeah, passive. Best passive so business.com forward slash best passive income. Yep. And uh, and learn more there. So, uh, Matt Miller, are we good? Yeah, man. I mean, I've, I've got a, a course that I just launched too, if you don't mind me just bringing it up. Sure. Folks, folks can go, if they just want to learn about vending and have no desire to look into a franchise or any of that stuff, they just want to learn the basics of vending they can go to vendingsecrets.net. Um, and if they use the coupon code best passive income, um, they can get the course for 97 bucks and oh, wow. learn, learn a whole new way to, to make money um, utilizing vending as a supplement. All right. That's really generous. I love it. Um, fantastic. And we'll have links to all that in our show notes. Scott Todd, are we good? Mark, we're great. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners and I want to remind you the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Matt Miller is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you've got to rate and you've got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at the landgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Uh, so please do that. It really helps us. And also just a reminder today's, uh, podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it financial CRM in the world. You can always make more money, but you can't get more time. Automate getting your money collected, geekpay.io. Um, and then learn more just at thelandgeek.com. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone and let freedom ring. Ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you.